I've always been interested in the idea of a language that is super strongly typed um, and essentially designed for military grade applications. The analogy I have used in the past for it was essentially you're trying to build a, the strongest building you could, the safest building you could. If you were to hire a crew of people to build all those things out, um, the crew of people essentially representing the programming language and the constructs within it, you would want them to be expertise and to do their job very well. But if safety was an incredibly high priority, you might even go to such extremes to where every member of your crew has another member on the crew simply hired to watch uh, their partner's work, to oversee, and to ensure that all standards are met. And that's how it's felt doing a little bit of beta, is that a lot of the really strong and enriched um, typing makes for a really interesting experience and a very secure experience and that you're not going to have much in variation in the language. <clears throat> but we'll explore some of that as I try to sort out, uh, no pun intended, a bubble sort algorithm with Ada as the primary language. But I do want to take a quick look at this Ada uh, wiki page. <clears throat> This is the um, wiki page for the Ada programming language. Just some high level interesting things. Um, more about the history of it here. Um, and that it was birthed out of a need from the Department of Defense being concerned by the number of different programming languages being used for its embedded computer system projects. And so this working group um, came together and formulated and iterated on a language that wind up becoming Ada as it is today. As you see there, it's highly intended for embedded computer systems that need to run a long time, and like I said, have very little variation in their output. Basically, remove as many unexpected pitfalls or errors that could be produced by the program uh, or a programmer uh, instituting new uh, procedures inside of it. They picked the name Ada, um, after uh, Ada Lovelace, who I don't know much about, but apparently she is almost like the mother of computer science. Um, she was a mathematician and essentially built out this concept of a general purpose computer um, a proposal she did. I don't know much about her. She seems really interesting. And I'd love to know more, and I'll probably do some more on that at another point. But nevertheless, I think that it's really, she's really interesting, um, and the language itself is interesting. For the project, I um, am using the Ada Core website um, introduction to Ada to get through a lot of the um, standard. Um, syntax, um, uh, statements, conditional expressions, and a few little built-in things to try to make this program work. And I stumbled through it the first time, so probably expect me to stumble through it again as I try to recreate it for this video. But like I said originally, my goal here is to implement the bubble sort algorithm on a simple array of integers um, to just really explore the language in a pretty simplistic manner. Uh, some of the constructs I'm going to use are a package so that I can have my code organized in there and kind of encapsulate procedures and functions um, in one area. But anyways, enough with the history and the talk about it. Let's dive in. So I'm here in my terminal, and what I first want to do, I believe, is let's just start with almost a hello world here and get that up and running to make sure I get the compiling and everything set up. So let's go ahead and create what I think we'll call hello is the um, I think we'll call it hello. So let me add one hello and the extension is .adb for ADA I think it stands for Ada Body, I think is what it stands for. Um, 
similar to other languages, you have use statements. And one that was common in the tutorials was to use ada.text.io to be able to have functionality to uh, read and write to standard input from a terminal. From there, you essentially create your starting procedure. And you want to give it a name that matches the file, um, at least until you get into the packages of things. So we'll call this hello. And we essentially say procedure hello is, and then we being we begin the procedure, I believe is the right syntax. Um, and then at some point we end the procedure, but we say end hello. And we'll go ahead and say print, no, nope, not print. Uh, we wanna say ada.textio.put line. And their flavor is to put a space between the parentheses and the statement. I don't know what that is about, but that seems to be the convention as far as ada core goes. Um, so anyways, uh, at that point, we should be able to put in a string literal and we'll just say, hello world. Now I went ahead and installed, this is Ubuntu. I went ahead and installed their GNAT make utility, which basically combines the GCC compiler for their operations and some linking and building processes. But I believe it's GNAT make and then it's hello.adb. Uh, I'm missing something here. Ada is undefined. Is it all caps Ada? No. Oh, that's right. It's not use, it's with. And then you say use after you include a package. So with is like import or include. Missing a semicolon on line five. Oh, that's obvious. This isn't Python. All right, it compiled. So you can see the GNAT process here, did a GCC process and then some sort of binding and linking process. And if we look at the files here, we have our ADB source file. This hello blank is our executable. This hello ALI is kind of like a checksum. Like we can look at this, not checksum. It's like a contents for the, for the executable, the object file. But I don't know what all this stuff is. It's... It almost reminds me of like when you're in, I don't remember the utility. There's a utility where you can like read out the objects inside of a C object file. I don't remember. Anyways, and this is the object file here. I don't know the whole process here. I'm not claiming to be an expert, obviously. But it worked. It compiled. So now let's run it. It's executable. And if we say hello, boom, it worked. Hello world. Awesome. We have created an ADA program, which is pretty cool. It did create a little bit of garbage here. Um, I don't really want that. So I'm going to go ahead and say, let's make a uh, bin dir. Let's make an object dir. Let's make a source dir. Let's move hello ADB into source. Uh, let's remove what all's in here. Uh, I'm going to remove hello and hello.ali and hello o. Yeah. Okay. And then I think what we can do. Um, yeah, let me think about this. I'd like to put together a shell script to do some of this processing for me. And I think what we could probably do is. I don't remember what the GNAT make is. I'm just going to cheat. I think it's GNAT make. And then you say, I want D for objects. So like basically dump your object files in this folder. I want to output my executable to bin. And this would be hello. And then I want to compile source hello.adb. OK. All right. And an object. Cool, that's the cruft. And in bin, hello, and can we run hello? I'm sure we can. Awesome. I like this. So that was this command right there. I'm going to go ahead and copy that because I want to keep that. And then we'll come back into, ah, let me quit out of all this. 
So I moved everything around. I'm going to create a shell script. No reason. Oh, shit, I moved that in there. No reason to make a full make file for this. We'll just do a shell script to run our process here. And we'll just say we put the executable. Uh, we'll just name the executable here like that. Yes. OK, cool. Let me close these again. So I've got a build script. And I add executable privileges for myself on the build script. Not CMOX, CHMOX. Uh, and well, it doesn't help. OK. And I should be able to say build hello. Oh, it's already up to date. OK, cool. All right, so I think we're good there. I think we've got something that works. Okay, now, now I want to try to move into the procedure of building the bubble sort. Let's let's jump in here. So we're in our source folder. We've got this hello file. What I want to do is I want to make since I have to put this procedure, this procedure is hello, and I have to have a name after it, I want to have more than one procedure to run this. Uh, what I'm originally kind of thinking here is that I'd like to see something that's like, oh, this is comments in it. I'd like to see something that's like function bubble sort takes an array, right? And then, you know, it does its whole thing. And then I want essentially what would be like a main. And I'd want like array equals one, two, three, four. Or what? Well, that was already sorted. That doesn't make sense. Two, three, five, six, one, whatever. And then I'd want to basically say array equals bubble sort array. And then print array. Essentially, this is just pseudocode for it. But this is what I'm thinking. And so I have basically my main procedure here. And then I've got a function for bubble sort. And I think the right way to kind of have a single program that lets me do multiple things. Like I said, I'm not an expert. But I think what we want to do is in Ada do this concept of packages um, under here. And I'm not going to read through all the documentation on this video, obviously. I already have an idea of how to do this. But let's see if we can throw together a package that basically lets me have a starting point procedure and run some functions out of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this main ADB. Um, I think what I want to do in main ADB, we'll go ahead and use the text IO. We're going to use a use statement too, so I don't have to reference the full package when I do it. Uh, well, let's just start with the procedure. Procedure main is begin end main. And let's just see if we can compile this. So build main. Uh, state, maybe I just can't have an, let's just say this, print line Bar. Hey, that worked. And then bin, oops. Bin main. Sweet. Okay, so I have my starting procedure here. Now I want to have, I think I'm going to have a sort file that has my sort algorithm in it. And so what I want to do is have, um, well, let's see. Before I su let's pseudocode out kind of what I want to see here. I want to probably say I want a list to start with. And inside of Ada, you actually declare your variables in these declarative regions before the begin. And the syntax essentially would look something like this, like list is of type array. And I want to start with values 1, 2. Why do I keep doing that? This sorting 1. Five, seven, right? But array is not really a built-in type, so I have to define types in Ada, which is really also pretty interesting, and I'll come back to that. But let's say we have a list of integers, and then I want to have something that's basically like sort uh, 
we'll, we'll reference a sort package and we'll say I want to sort bubble list. Um, let's say I do something like this. It returns a list. So basically I take the list and I sort it and then I want to maybe have a sort dot print list for L and then I want to see that output to the screen. Something like that. So what I'm going to try to shoot for is creating a sort package that has a function in it called bubble that takes a list, bubble sorts it, and then um, returns it. So I'm going to go ahead and create a sort.adb file. And I'm going to create a sort.ads file. This is essentially, I believe, like the header file in a C or C++. Um, I think it stands for ADA structure, I think. These are ADA bodies, ADBs, ADS is ADA structure. Essentially, it holds the definitions of functions that you're defining in your body, very similar to C++ or something. So uh, we will run with it. But before I put the header file in there, um, I think what I want to do is get, let's see if I can get the package sorted out here. So we'll say, uh, we'll go ahead and bring in my favorite here, text.io. And we'll use ada.text.io. And then we'll say package body sort is, this is how you define a package. I think it's end sort, I think. I think you say end, Ugh, can I type? Uh, I don't think you say end package. I might be wrong there. Anyways, we'll find out the hard way. And then let's say we have a function in here and we'll call it bubble. And uh, I don't even know. But before we do that, let's define Let's define some types because we need to actually get an array working. And I think that's probably best if I do that over here. So in the sort ADS file where the definitions are, similarly, we're gonna say package sort is, and this is does not have the package body uh, syntax in here, it's just package. So now we want to define a type. And types in ADA are really interesting. Like you can literally define your own type and give it your own ranges. Like I could say something like type foo is, uh, golly, what is the syntax for this? Um, I think it's like type foo is integer. Uh, I'm blanking on this. I don't quite remember off the top of my head. Let's see. You could define a type inside of Ada. The syntax looks very similar to this right here. Yeah, let's see. Actually, was it up here? So here we go. Like type my int is this range. Yeah, that's kind of what it was like. Type foo is range 0 through 10. You leave off the parentheses. And so this is really interesting. Basically, I just defined a type. It's an integer and its valid values are zero to 10. And you can even do this with like indexes, like a type index for an array is a range zero to 256, right? So basically if I was gonna say something like this, type index is range 256, I think you can then say basically uh, type list is an array and the index is an index, I think is what you say. So if type index. Uh, and then 
It's an array whose indexes are of type index that I just created of, and then they have these other keywords, but I think just integer, I believe would work. I don't know if this will compile. We have these types. Uh, I don't know if I actually need a body for this. Anyways, we'll roll with it. The idea is like you can define types yourself explicitly with bounds and ranges. Like I could see the valued range for this index is 20 to 50, 256 or negative 1,200. You know, it's just, it's cool. It's really kind of interesting. But what I want to do is I, I want to have a list and we'll say the list takes zero to five integers. And that and that's it. It takes it has a indexes of zero to five. And I believe it has to have five elements in it when you define it. And we'll find out, right? Uh, we're also gonna have this function bubble. And we're going to say it takes as a parameter to list uh, of type uh, an L parameter the variable called L, and then it returns a type list. This is interesting. So instead of it being like C, where you're like, you know, uh, void function int L, right? And that's your function's definition. In this one, you actually put your type. Uh, separate by colon after the name of the variable, whatever, right? So we'll just say it returns a list. Then over here under the package, um, I think what I want to do is, I don't really want to, uh, all right, so we have a function. We've got to have a body here. Function bubble, like we said, takes a type list variable. And the function is, um, I don't think we're declaring anything special for this. So we'll just do end and then we'll do end bubble, I think is what we put. And we'll just say for the time being, just return L. So it doesn't do anything. I just want to get this compiling with a concept in here. To do. Okay, so we have definitions of a type and a function. We've got a package body that has the function body inside of it. Oh, wait, I need to put that in here. And then in main, I want to with sort, I'm not gonna use it because I kinda wanna see what I'm doing here. And then I said it took five elements, right? So we'll say, I want a list of type, I want a L variable of type list, and I'm gonna go ahead and assign it nine, four, three, five, two. I'm gonna leave the last one off because I, I think it's gonna complain about a variety of things. Nah, I take that back, I'll put this on there. And then I don't have this function yet, so we'll comment this out and let's just see if we compile it. List is not visible, non-visible declaration of sort ADS line two. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, how do I get this in? Oh, you know what? I think because in here, I'm not saying use. I think I have to say it's a sort dot list because it's defined there. Okay, cool. We're starting to get something else going on here. Too few elements for type list defined at sort dot ADS Two, constraint error will be raised at runtime. Missing return compilation error. Fun. I think what it's the first error is saying here is I have five elements, but I deceived myself because it actually takes an array of zero through five, and we know with arrays it is uh, zero through four if I want five elements. Let's see if that kills that first error. Aha, it did. So then on line four on sort ADB and missing a return. Um, eh, I got a return. Missing a return. Oh, yeah, you have to declare the retype. Yes. Uh, return. 
type list. Let's see if that works. Wow. All right. Bin main. Doesn't do anything, but it compiles. And if it compiles, then it works. If it compiles, then it works exactly the way we intended it. So sweet, we have a list here. Uh, and it's, it's close to sorted. <laughs> all right. They have all sorts of other things too. Like they actually have data structures where you can have like arrays of not a fixed size that, you know, probably do dynamic memory resizing and things like that. Um, but I don't think I need to use it for this example. All right, so let's do the actual bubble sort. Um, just for reference, for those who are not 100% familiar with it, this is a good example, variety of languages here in Geeks for Geeks. Essentially, you're just comparing. When you iterate through the list, you're comparing uh, each element with its neighbor. And if it's greater than it, it swaps position. And essentially, you scan the list, uh, the full list, and then you scan the full list minus one, and then minus one, minus one. And I think it's like a big O of log of the N or something like that. I don't remember. It's been a while since it was college. But the algorithm looks pretty simple. It's it's basically like this. Iterate over the full list. Uh, iterate over the full list. Then iterate over the list as, um, and as you do, shrink by one and never look at the end because by the time you get to the end, the last one on the end is correct. And then when you're inside of there, basically you just swap them. Uh, whenever you find out one's greater than the other. That's a bubble sort. Nothing mind-blowing there, but they're fun to write, just for fun. Okay, so if we have this bubble sort function, we take a list. Uh, I want to loop through the list, and I believe the syntax is for i in lists, and they have these interesting, they call them attributes. Like normally when we think of like an attribute on a object it might be like object dot attribute equals you know whatever or maybe object attribute equals whatever but their attributes are a um they're a single quote which is weird it's just one single quote i don't know why they picked that syntax but whatever, just accept it and roll with it. Uh, so then we say end loop to end our loop. So this is going to be our outer loop. That should loop for i in lists range, in the, in the range of the elements. i should be the index in the range. Um, and then what we want to do is an inner loop. But what's really weird, and I struggled with figuring this out, is doing a range loop in ADA. I'm sure there's a way to do it, but this whole concept of like n minus one, um, n minus i minus one is really tip is really not straightforward, at least as far as the basic docs go. Essentially, I tried a variety of things like l in um, zero through to find my own range l dot range underscore last minus i minus one <laughs> it just did not, i mean of course it did not work at all like nobody in their right mind would think that this would remotely work was, of course it didn't and of course i tried to make it work for like I don't know, probably way too long, like 30, 40 minutes for I was like, this is just stupid. They have a better way of doing a loop, which is more like a while loop. You just, or almost like a do while loop. Um, you just say loop and end loop. And then you provide an exit condition somewhere in it that's tested. Exit when, and we would say when J, uh, and this is the inverted of a for loop. So when J, instead of J being, you know, less than n minus i minus 1. It's j is greater than n, which in this example we're running is actually the, the size of the list. So you can say l, 
with an attribute length, so the list length, minus the outer loops um, uh, distance traversed minus one, oops, minus one. Right, okay. So when that condition hits, exit the loop. I just put that at the top. It makes it kind of like a while loop. And then I also want to make sure that I increment J. There's no plus plus operator. So it's J uh, equals J plus one, right? And now I'm in my inner loop. So this is inner loop through diminishing returns. I'll just call it that. I can type it. Okay. Okay, so this is essentially us recreating the fancy for loop with a loop exit. Okay, so now we just wanna we just wanna test it. Let's say if the lists element at position J is greater than the lists element at position J plus one, then end if, I like to close all my stuff, so I got a nice tree built out here, I need to swap it. So this is where I would swap it, but let's compile. Does this run? Oh, well, duh, it runs, does it compile? Okay, statement expectation, line 15, uh, oh, duh, this is what we said before. Let's just print something out. So we would say, we're using a to text IO, so should we have access to this put command? It's kind of like put line, but it's put character. And then there's an attribute on integers called a, uh, image function that you can run to basically turn them into a string to print. So let's just do this. Let's just print, I think it's integer.image j. So we'll just print that out. And then when we're done with the loop uh, here, let's do a new line. Since new line does not take any parameters, it's like a, a procedure that runs, you don't actually have to put the parentheses on there. Anyways, um, J is undefined. What do you mean J is undefined? I'm looking at it. Oh, wait, no, I was pseudocoding it. I didn't actually define J. Need to define J, it's kind of important. So here's the other thing, you can't just say J is a type integer that starts with zero. Like you can't define um, a local variable like that, you're not allowed. You have to put everything in what they call a declarative region, which is kind of cool. You basically say, I'm declaring a new variable, J, and this variable's, the, everything defined in this declaration region um, will have scope in this process here, inside this block here, begin to end. It's kind of like curly braces in C, uh, but I'm going to put the loop in here, nest it, try to keep the code small here so we can see it. So now I've defined J as an integer that starts at zero. and then it is going to iterate its way through the list. Let's see if that works. Okay, so bin main. All right, we got some output here. Zero, two, three, zero, two, zero, and zero. Okay, if we look at our thing. Oh, well, J is an index. Guess that kind of makes sense. What if we say, Instead of putting the index out, let's say list at position J. See if we can just see something a little cleaner here. 9, 6, 2, 9, 6, 9, and 9. I don't get the 9 and 9. That feels like something's off there. But 9, 6, and 2. Where'd the 3 go? Something seems pretty fishy here. Hmm. 
Well, we won't know until we actually try to sort it. And we can't sort it until we swap it. All right, so we want to swap these variables, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to declare a temporary variable. It would normally be temporary, but you know, it's got a little bit more prestige in this language. We will say declare, I'll just call it x. It's an integer, and it's going to be equal to list at position j. You know, and just for sanity's sake, I'm going to just define another one, y. We'll say it is the integer at j plus one. So these are the two that we're comparing. So I've made copies of them. And then in here, since I want to swap them, I'm going to say list at position j is now equal to y, this guy, j plus one. And then I'm going to put in j plus one value of x. And that, I think, should be our swapping algorithm. Does it build? In mode parameter not allowed. Ah, that's right. Okay, so let's go back up here to the function declaration here. Let me shrink some of this white space out here so we can kind of see a little bit what's going on here. Um, so by default, every parameter that gets passed into a function is read only. And I believe the actual syntax for that, or the declaration is the word in. Basically, you can read this in, but you can't push anything out to it. Because the other one is out, which is like saying you can write to it, kind of. I don't know. If, don't remember all the ins and outs for that, literally. <laughs> but here is the syntax I want to roll with. It's in and out. Basically, it just gives me full write access to it. So I'm basically saying, hey, I'm going to write to this no matter what. Uh, let's kill this comment. It doesn't make any sense. Let's just say inner loop here, outer loop. That'll shrink some of that down. Man, we got some nasty going on in here. All right, let's try to compile again. Uh, mode L does not match. Not fully conformant with the declaration of sort.ads. Ah, I also have to put in and out here in the function definition. Okay, I think it built. And if I run it, I don't know what's going on with that. Maybe I should print the list out. <laughs> let's let's print the full list. Uh Let's do this too. Like, let's define it as a procedure. Print list, and it takes an L in type list. And since it's a procedure, it doesn't have a return. So then back over here, I think I can say procedure print list. Um, takes L as list is begin end print list. No print list. Print print list. Okay. And then I just want to print it out. For I N L range loop put integer image L at position I end loop I think and maybe you stick a new line after it okay that's our procedure so if we could sort it and then we could say sort dot print list L. Let's print it before and after. Does this compile 31 statement not allowed in declarative part? Um, oh yeah, begin. End for begin at line 36. 
Oh, I just put it in the wrong spot. All right. Okay. Oh, look at that. Nine three six two one one two three six nine. That looks sorted. That looks sorted. I think it's working. Uh, someone's throwing a new line in here. This guy. I think it's working. Let's recompile. Run it. Original list was 93621. Current list is 12369. That looks sorted. Uh, I think if all I have to do is switch this sign as well, and we should be in business for inverted sorting. 96321. Sweet, guys. I am pretty sure we are done with this. Um, yeah, I, I am pretty sure this is functional. I, we could clean this up. I mean, this is kind of a nested. I'm curious when it comes to big projects, like, does it get this insane with, like, the scoping and stuff? I don't know. Um, but it's been a little bit of a journey. I I really like it. Let's let's try some things here. Let's try one that 100, 1000, 10,101, 63 and then negative 1. Let's see if this will blow up. And we're just going to say if that's successful compiling, let's just run it out the gate. Negative 1 2 6 100. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Well, I wasn't sure if I'd make it there. I knew I knew I had done this somewhat earlier, and you know I'm trying to work through it now while I'm commentating it. It's been interesting, um, and maybe it doesn't look the prettiest. I'm pretty sure, like if we compare my Ada bubble sort, which in theory is pretty similar to one of these guys over here, the C one. Um, it's definitely not as elegant. But I mean, I guess that's really, you know, up to the user to kind of define that. I like think of it as like a really regimented and strong military force, like a large battalion or something. Sure, there's a lot of density and repetition, but there's maybe beauty in that, in the strength that comes with it. Um, it's incredibly... Uh, expressive. I believe that's one of their philosophies. If you read in the Ada Corp documentation, it talks about their philosophy being um, they would rather it be expressive and understood than less expressive but concise. So they go for what you read should really be what the application is doing. That the program should run as you see it. Um, whereas it's really interesting to other languages seem to have different philosophies around this, like Python's all about brevity. Go, Golang is like just really on the far end of brevity, like even to where the community doesn't like any variables that are longer than three or four characters sometimes. It's really interesting. I should try to do a video on Golang. I've really enjoyed that. Um, but this is really cool. I want to explore this more. I want to do something I shouldn't do with this. I want to do something ridiculous, like like make a web server that can process a page. Like you would never do that in Ada. I kind of want to do it. I don't know if Ada is capable of multi-threading. I'm sure it is. Um, I'm curious, like how does recursion work in this? What would a recursive function look like? Can you do function pointers? Can you do closures? Can you do Lambda operations. Um, what does it look like when you start getting into the object-oriented uh, pool for Ada? How uh, is that more closer to C, where it's structs and just functions operating on structs? Can you have pack? Can you have properties inside of a package and then have functions that read properties out of the package directly? Are they static? Are they not static? Those are very interesting concepts. I'd love to explore with this. I really enjoy it. I want to do a bigger project and really sink my teeth into it and really say, yep, I've got a good handle on this. But regardless, um, uh, Ada is really interesting. I'm glad you took this little ride with me. Um, hopefully we've all learned something from this that uh, probably should stick to this as a hobby and maybe not pursue it full time for myself, uh, but we'll see. Um, 
I do think that there's probably a lot of ways to clean this up, but it was really fun. So hopefully I can follow up on this and do some more deeper dives on some of it, maybe try to uh, suss out some extra um, <clears throat> use cases for it besides just your traditional algorithms or data structures like bubble sorts. But anyways, um, I'll keep shooting, trying to make some more stuff. And other than that, I will uh, see you on the next video.